All right, welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. After 18 seasons in the NBA where he earned the reputation of being one of the best buzzer-beating shot makers in the history of the association and a few seasons on the sideline as the coach of the New York Knicks, he is now member of the Dancing with the Stars cast of 2017. Good to see you, Derek Fisher. <laughs> new team. Thank yeah, you, I Rich. know it is a new team. It is a new team. Yeah. Um, how 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 did you come about to do the, the dancing, um, Derek? Yeah, just life. I mean, you know, after 20 years basically of being in the NBA and playing yeah. and coaching and not having time or even the desire to explore these other things and other opportunities sure. and timing and life just kind of connected, and uh, here I am. Now, now, the competitive juices, though, do flow. Always. Based, well, I mean, because, you know, <laughs> I have, I have um, worked with Emmett Smith, Kurt Warner, Warren Sapp, Michael Irvin, and I don't believe I'm missing anybody, uh, Jerry Rice, mm. they've all done this, mm -hmm. and they all say that, it, Irvin, my gosh, uh, they, they all say that this is serious business when it gets down to it. Yeah, They no. want to win. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's you a know? lot of fun. Um, it's hard work. Right. And you for sure, like, and we haven't started yet, or the premiere will be next week. Yes. But once it turns into a competition, I... I have no doubt that you'll want to win yeah. badly. The Lachets are going down, is what you're saying. I, I'm going to try my best. To no, sure no, 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 no. Come on now. No, I know. I know personal. you've always been humble, you know. <laughs> but I mean, T.O. is going to be in this mix. Yeah, here. he's not going to be humble about anything. No, when I it think T.O. is a. He has a humble. Oh. aspect to him that people don't. Oh, I. Know. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. He's been on this show yeah, many and times, a good dude, and he's got. I, the, he's got that going. But when it comes down to the competition, yeah, he has great. Footwork though, which is so important to this show. So sure. I, I think he'll do well. I haven't seen him, you know, right. practicing yet, but I think he'll do well. I think there's no question he is going to, uh, at least if I was him, mm -hmm. he would bring a star out, mm -hmm. put it in the middle of the floor, and do a number on a star, yeah. just like he did with the 49ers. And see, that's where we'll have a problem because T.O. and I have a great relationship, mm -hmm. um, but I'm a Cowboys fan. Is that right? And if, I didn't he, even lip, know if that. he tries to bring a star out and do a dance over the top of a star, <laughs> yeah. it's going to be a fight on dancing you'll with be the stars. The, <laughs> so you're saying you'll be the George Teague of that situation? Yes, I will be George Teague. Who's just going to come and blow <laughs> that yes, thing up? I loved every moment of it, which was before I knew T.O., but I literally loved seeing <laughs> I didn't George Teague. I are you Are you from the Metroplex area? Is that where you're uh, from? I'm, from I'm born and raised in Little Rock. Okay. Uh, so Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson went go. to the U of A and... So they have a rich history with the state, and I grew up kind of knowing their story and then followed, you know, Jerry Jones to Dallas, and, uh, and then Jimmy Johnson came to coach later. So I've been with the Cowboys since 89, 1 in 15, and, you know, riding ever since. Irvin. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. You know, that's right. Irvin was there in the 1 in 15, and then mm -hmm. they get Troy, and then, then Emmett comes, and then the rest is literally history. Yeah. Derek Fisher here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, all right, let's talk some hoops before we return to to dancing. Um, your shot making ability with mere seconds to go. Is there something that you could explain about your clarity of moment in those moments, like that Game Five in the Western Conference Semifinals against the Spurs back in '04, or uh, the '09 NBA Finals that Game Four? I mean, is there something similar to these moments that you're able, allowed you to make those shots? Derek? I mean. I for me, uh, the similarities are just that I always approach those moments with uh, uh, the same clarity and focus I tried to give to practice and shoot around and preseason and regular season is that, you know, whenever the game is, is going, until it's over, it's not over. And there was something about, in particular in San Antonio, you know, we were up 15 in that game, I think at 1.73. One to 56 or something like that. Whatever type of run they made, Dunk, Duncan makes the shot. And even if you see during the timeout, like I'm sitting there and I'm pissed that we've allowed them to come back and take the lead. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I'm still thinking there's enough time for something to happen. Um, I played a game in college. We were down by one point with 0.2 seconds left. Arkansas Little Rock at Mississippi State. And I'm taking the ball out of bounds on the baseline. I make eye contact with my teammate and point him to the rim that way. He spins out to the front of the rim. I throw the ball. He tips it. <laughs> we win the game at Mississippi State. So those experiences no for me yeah. taught me that 
as long as there's time on the clock, you can figure something out. And just, but in the moment when the shot's going up, you, you don't think anything about it. You don't think I want it. You don't think anything of that nature. No, I, I, I want those opportunities. Sure. Um, I play with some of the greatest players to ever play the game, and so those opportunities were few, and <laughs> far between. Sure. Rightfully so, because. Kobe Bryant and Shaquille and, and, and Pau Gasol, et cetera, those guys deserve those opportunities. Well, you gotta you gotta bring Ori into that mix too, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, I you know, um Robert um He's the king of those shots as well. Yeah, I think along with you. You know, but Rob's because it was on a few different teams, I yes. think sometimes people forget, you know, how big of a shot maker he was because he did it in Houston and LA and San Antonio. Uh, but for me, I always wanted to be in those opportunities and those those situations. So when they did come, I mean, I figured I might as well try to make it. <laughs> Derek Fisher here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, day after it's announced that Kobe is going to get his number numbers yeah. 8 and 24 going in the rafters with the Warriors in the house. That'll yeah. be an interesting night. What was it? I mean, you, you were there for the entirety, uh, in a way, of mm -hmm. his transformation. You were there for everything. Yeah. Where it was with Shaq, and then you were there when he was in his own personal troubles, and then when – when everything was moving on and he wanted to be the man. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were there for all of that. What was it like being alongside watching that, Derek? Um, I'm, I'm always amazed even, because I don't talk about these things, you know, at dinner with my friends and we're just talking about Lakers in history, but. Well, that's why you come on the Rich Eisen. I, exactly, so okay. when Rich Eisen asked me about yeah. these moments, um, I'm always amazed at, um, what Kobe was able to accomplish. And even though I was right next to him and had a front row seat, a lot of times it, until you look back at it and really understand what he was able to do, I don't think you fully appreciate it. Uh, to be um, a high school graduate only a few months before and literally show up to the association already decided that he was gonna be one of the greatest to ever play the game and then to have the type of career he had on the court, accomplish what he accomplished, have the ups and downs personally, privately, publicly, however you want to describe it, but still be able to hold on to this idea that I'm going to be one of the greatest to ever do this by the time I'm finished with it. The level of focus and discipline that that takes is remarkable. And I just, I'm always um, amazed and kind of humbled in the sense of like, I got a chance to be around that for a long time. Well, you always hear though it was it's it's not easy being his teammate either, uh, and 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 then he got the rep towards the end of his career that people didn't flat out didn't want to come play with him. And I'm wondering what you say when you hear that, Derek. I I agree to the standpoint of it's not easy, but it's not supposed to be easy when you're trying to be great. And then when you think about like we're all waking up every day trying to be you know above average or something. <laughs> and this guy was waking up every day wanting to be the greatest basketball player to ever touch the earth. That's a different level of thinking. And for me, it wasn't easy at all, at all times, but I just don't think that anything that is great is easy. So people tried to, I think it's easy to blame Kobe for things and put a lot on him to say it wasn't easy to play with him. So therefore then, that absolves some people of their responsibility that, that they have to the team to be the best version of themselves. So why would we be mad at him for literally always wanting to be the best of himself and then expect that from you? So he and I never had many issues because I always wanted to be the best I could be for the team, and that's all he was trying to do. Yeah, I mean, Derek Fisher here on the Rich Eisen Show, the same people that I said that I worked with and thus have that competitive edge when it comes to dancing, mm -hmm. Uh, are the same people who are in Pro Football Hall of Fame, yeah. jackets and busts, et cetera, because of exactly what we're talking about here, that they don't suffer fools gladly at all, that they have problems with people who don't come to work every day mm -hmm. with the 24-7, 365 mindset to be great. Right. That's why a lot of them don't coach, too. Right. Because it's very right. difficult yeah. <laughs> to be able to coach somebody up when you're – upset that they don't get it right from bedtime to sunrise yeah and then everything in between right as well what i mean so can you give me a moment where kobe was a little bit 
uh, in somebody's face and they couldn't handle it. You don't have to give me a name, but where you saw that type of moment with Kobe? No, nah, not really that guys couldn't handle it. I just think that it made people uncomfortable at times, like because nobody else was doing that to them. So then what about Phil being the coach with Kobe? What 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 just what like about, where like, where he's the coach yeah. and 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 trying to corral that talent and um, mindset. Yeah, I, I in mean, a way. To me, we the stuff that we experienced was not much different than, to me, most great teams or great organizations or groups. Like you don't hear stories about the battles that go down in the boardroom at Apple or Google or mm -hmm. Amazon. But if we did hear about them, yeah. I'm sure some people have gotten cursed out and, you know, talked to a certain way and somebody fired back and said something back or whatever. But at the end of the day, yes, they still get the job done. They're still one of the best companies in the world at whatever they do. So for me, though, that's what I remember. I don't connect to, like, this one day that Phil had to say this to Kobe and then Kobe said this back in it. I just don't because the goal was to win championships and – we got that done a lot of times. Yes, you did. Uh, Derek Fisher, I want to take a break. Back in 60 seconds, talk to you about the current NBA and then your experience with the New York Knicks as a diehard Knicks fan who has disowned the team. You need a hug, Rich? Well, uh, a, not need... only a verbal, <laughs> a physical hug. Yes, yes, by the way, that is how this interview is going to end. I'll give you that heads up. But uh, I, I, need, I, need, I need to hang my hat on something here. Um, and, and then we'll just return to the dancing and send you on your way. Okay. okay. Back in 60 seconds with Derek Fisher here on The Rich Eisen Show. Welcome back to The Rich Eisen Show. Once again, Dancing with the Stars, the season 25. Holy crap. 25 seasons of, of Dancing with the Stars. It premieres next Monday on ABC at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and one of the contestants is sitting right next to me here, Derek Fisher. Uh, let's talk current Lakers, if you don't mind, with Lonzo Ball. How do you think he's going to fare in this league? With, ev uh, with everything, skill set, off the court, with his dad, and yeah. the expectation level, and maybe target on his back with some veterans. Yeah, in no, the I think um, on the court, I mean, we obviously have a long time to wait and see. I mean, it, he has the potential, obviously, to have a, a great first year as a rookie, but it could be a struggle this year, and that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to have a, a bad career. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we still have to be patient in terms of where he will be on the court as his career unfolds. I lean towards him being successful, maybe not to the degree of the hype that everybody's placing on him, but it it takes there's it takes a skill. You have to have skill to manage the noise that surrounds his life and his family's life and how big they are when they walk in a room. And to me, he kind of has that skill. Like he knows kind of how to exist in that will not be, be but, too flippant it, it seems like he's he's been around <laughs> noise since his birth <laughs> and yeah, has learned I mean, how maybe to tune it out yeah and, and in a way and, and with love yeah, obviously and and love and respect his dad hear the things that maybe he says at times yeah but then still be able to kind of live in his own space and be his own young man and not have to be like his dad but at the same time <laughs> my dad I love him that's why I'm here so he to me he gets all of that and that's a big part of of being successful and being the face of the Lakers is you have to be able to handle the noise because that comes with yeah being one of the guys that the Lakers are building around so and I think some guys in recent years weren't comfortable in that space what do you think if uh, do you think how do you think magic would handle it if LeVar even twitches about popping off about minutes played coaching style Anything like that? What do you think Magic does, knowing knowing everybody that you do? Yeah, Derek? no, I think, you know, Magic will, in my opinion, and I can't speak for him. That would be a private conversation that they would have at some point, not to reprimand or you can't tell another grown man how to live and and what he should or shouldn't do, um, but just a conversation that, to me, any team president or management should have with. Uh, uh, an employee or a family member of an employee that look, we're just we're trying to mm -hmm. do business a certain way actually it'll make your your son's job easier if we kept things in a certain fashion to me that's the type of conversation you would want to have okay what'd you think of Kyrie saying I want out of Cleveland and then getting those exit papers and that trade between Cleveland and, and the Celtics Derek what'd you think of that one 
I mean, right now, it may not make sense to a lot of people to want to leave. You know, they've been to the finals three years in a row. Right. When you're on LeBron's team, you probably are going to be in the finals. Uh, so it may not make sense now, but to me, Kyrie has always had um, that thing that that puts him in the class of the biggest stars in the game. Mm -hmm. and And so he feels like he's ready to step into that now. He's not by himself in Boston. Gordon Hayward's a, a damn good basketball player, and he's you know been in Utah and been a franchise player as well. But there's, Kyrie wants to be, um, he wants to be the guy that it all revolves around, not just in terms of shots and attempts, but that the pressure really is on him mm -hmm. to make sure that his team wins. And I think playing with LeBron for him, um, he didn't see himself getting that opportunity. So. You know, similar to Shaq and, and Kobe, Kobe and, and you that front experience. Row seat where, for that. Yeah, yeah and, and but we don't have to define that as a negative thing. Like when when did it turn into young men wanting to aspire for more, to achieve more? Well, it's also about to, well, it's also about team. I mean, I don't need to tell yeah. a coach that either. And you're right. you know, I mean, it's about the team and you know, Correct. the Pat Riley disease of more, right? Yes, that he always talks about. Yes, but I don't think that because you individually want to do more, that that means that the team is less. For example, when we won a championship in 2000, mm -hmm. I came off the bench behind Ron Harper, had a different type of role on that championship team. That summer, Kevin Garnett and I were on the Jamie Foxx show when he had a sitcom, so I have my, my SAG after <laughs> card as well. So, so we're having a conversation backstage. Yeah. And Kevin asked me, Fish, what else do you want to accomplish? Like, you just won a championship. What else is it in the league you want to do? And I said, look, I love winning a championship, but I, I want more than that. I want to be in the game, in the fourth quarter, making the big decisions and making the big shots. That's ultimately what ended up happening because I've spoken into existence because that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But that didn't mean that the Lakers or the team or Kobe or Shaq or anybody next to me meant less it just meant that I wanted more. And to me, that's what Kyrie or anybody else is saying when they make some of these decisions. It's not that my teammates don't mean anything to me, but why can't I maximize my fullest potential and also huh. be on a great team? And if you had said that on an Instagram account back in 2000, look out. It'd be different. Shows like this. It'd be different. Shows like, you know. Yes. It'd ESPN, be much different. And that's a different side. Of, yeah, the different side of the business that these guys are having to navigate. And some of them do it well. Some of them yeah. maybe not. But I'm just proud of these guys for continuing to, to try and do them and be them in the midst of all of it. Huh. And when you see what Russell Westbrook in, is doing and has been able to do after the way he would consistently get ridiculed for being who he is and how he plays – and to be able to, like, just continue to grow in all of that and to become the MVP, and and but to be able to be in fashion and, and be in New York Fashion Week and, yes. and balance the commercials and all the things now that be before a dad, being a and dad be a too. new dad and yeah. a husband. And that, that just says a lot about, to me, the character and integrity of these guys that sometimes we just try to throw to the side. Derek Fisher here on the Rich Eisen Show for a few more minutes. What, what did happen in New York City with the Knicks? Where did it all go wrong, Derek? Um, do you think? Yeah, see, I, I think, you know, the the year to year circumstances and situations are more symbolic of a larger, you know, issue that has to continue to be figured out. Is is, and just like any team in sports, you have an ownership group or owner, you have management, you have coaches and players, and unless there is a one hundred percent alignment in the vision of how we're going to have the greatest football or basketball, and in this case, basketball team and organization, mm -hmm. if there's not an alignment in those thoughts about who we're going to be as an organization, our mission statement, our core principles, the type of people we want working for us, the type of guys we want playing for us, the style of play we want to play that we feel like puts our players in the best position to be successful. If all those things aren't aligned, it does not work. So to me, it's not a, a – just a Jim Dolan thing or a Phil Jackson thing or a Derek Fisher thing. That's consistent across the board in any spectrum. If there's not alignment in those things, you won't be successful. You won't win. So that's, where, where me, was that's what happened with us. Well, where was the lack of alignment? I mean, because Dolan hired Phil who hired you. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Where where did the alignment go out of whack out of that flow chart in your estimation? I, I just think they're really time wise, mm -hmm. you you know, getting in alignment sometimes takes more than eighteen months. Um, so, you know, I think in terms of alignment, I personally didn't spend a lot of time talking to Jim Dolan about alignment of vision. I was hired as the coach. My relationship was more with Phil. Okay. Um, so and you didn't have much reaction interaction with James Dolan? Never? Not a not a lot. He would come in and say good luck, you know, before games at the Garden. Uh, but he, you know, he didn't pop into practices regularly and throw his weight around as the owner. So I always felt like he respected my space as the coach. What about Phil? Did he come, um, did he pop in? Oh, yeah, well. Phil was in the building regularly, so okay. he he would watch practice from his office or come out onto the court and watch practice. And there's you know plenty of on record statements about times when maybe he would come in and want to say some things or make a comment about what was going on in the court. Yeah. Um, and that was a part of being in that environment. And but that didn't doom us for lack of success. I mean, they're just you know there are a lot of reasons why teams don't win and. As a head coach, it mm -hmm. ends up stopping at you. And if you don't win, you lose your job. Oh, sure, that, you take responsibility. Yeah. I understand that. If you don't mind, I'm going to take a couple of shots at the bullseye okay. here. Can the triangle work in the NBA in the 2017, 2018, 21st century? I don't, I don't know if it can work the way we did it. The same way you can't teach ninth grade algebra the way you used to 20 years ago. Doesn't mean it's not algebra, but you just can't approach it the same. The kids are different. The way they learn and receive information is different. I personally think that the format of it, the spacing, how to utilize different players in different positions, yeah. you can utilize, but then there's some things you can do to make it a little more difficult to guard based on the way teams defend in the NBA now. Okay, and did Phil want the, the job as a team president? I mean, did he really understand the 24-7, 365 aspect of it. I mean, it, it I just... I think he wanted the job. I don't think he would have taken the job if he didn't want it. And, I, you know, mm -hmm. he'll be able to answer that better than me. Um, but I think, of course, his his energy was really focused more about on the court. And I think Steve Mills, as the general manager, was there to help execute a lot of things in terms of the business and the management aspect of it. Um, and so, it, you know, again... I don't think everything can be placed on Phil or on me or on Steve Mills or on Carmelo or any one person. Um, just as a group, we didn't get it done, and we all have to take some responsibility for it. All right, before I let you go, uh, uh, Ken Tulo, our producer, put up on the screen, and I'll read out for uh, Derek Fisher the, uh, the odds makers on the 2017 season 25 for Dancing oh. with the Stars. Uh, they're... Uh, is Nick Lachey at four to one? Yep. Debbie Gibson leads a trio at eight to one. Mm -hmm. Malcolm in the middle has better odds than Derek Fisher. Is that for? Is that true? At nine to one. That's what this is. Right I there. mean, as I mean, and then there you are at ten to one with Terrell Owens. And come on now. Yeah, what I mean, do you that, think? Malcolm not, in the I, middle, Frankie Muniz has better it's not, odds. That's not new, it's though. Respect, what you do you know? mean not new? What? What? In the, what? No, what? that's not. It's not new for me to have you know oh, low see. odds. Um, but so low odds just, in comparison to the guy who was in Malcolm in the middle and Frankie Muniz, I would think that that's a that's a new. That makes sensation. sense, though. You know, he's been on TV. He's a performer. Come you know, on, he understands certain things. <laughs> uh, so we'll you know we'll just have to see <laughs> uh, as the season unfolds. If those numbers change, that's my job. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. At Derek Fisher Thank on Twitter. You. Dancing with the Stars Season 25 premieres next Monday at 8 Eastern Time. We're back with more in a moment. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you liked some of that, get some more of that on the Rich Eisen Show app. Follow all the information you see right here on the Rich Eisen Show.